Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Jessel Noor in Baltimore. The Chicago Teachers Union voted to go on strike on October 11th unless they get a new contract. The nearly 30,000 members of CTU have been working with that one for over a year. Key in the negotiations is the issue of school funding. This week alone, budgets were slashed by some $45 million at city schools. Chicago is the third largest school district in the country, and like the previous seven-day strike in 2012, this also comes at an election year and pits Democratic Mayor Rahm Emanuel, a close ally of President Obama and the Clintons, against the militant caucus of rank-and-file educators, or CORE, that helms the Chicago Teachers Union. I was in Chicago for a one-day strike that took place on April 1st and spoke to parent Zerlina Smith. Schools are being underfunded because they refuse to tax the wealthy, the 1% who gets everything. And children of color are the main ones who are affected. Look at this school in this community. The murder rates are at the highest in the city of Chicago and most parvish colored communities. So I'm out here to make sure that if our children can't get the basic necessities, that they get the quality of education that they deserve. Well, we're now joined by two guests from Chicago. Sarah Chambers is a special education teacher and a member of the Chicago Teachers Union Executive Board and the co-chair of CORE, the Caucus of Rank and File Educators. We're also joined by Micah Utrecht. He's an associate editor of Jacobin Magazine. He's the author of Strike for America, Chicago Teachers Against Austerity, which is about that 2012 strike. Thank you both for joining us. Thank Thanks you. for having me. So Sarah, let's start with you. Um, so you're actually a teacher at Zerlina Smith's school, Saucedo. Um, I wanted to ask you why a strike um, and get your response to Chicago Public Schools CEO Forrest Claypool. He said that um, Chicago Public Schools is doing everything possible to avoid interruptions to students' learning. A strike would harm children and, he ho and it would halt the great progress the kids are making. It would create an enormous burden for families. Um, so why a strike, and how do you respond to those that say this is going to hurt families and students? Well, we've been bargaining for over 450 days now, and we're fighting for what's right to save our public schools. And Claypool is wrong. He has not, you know, him and the Board of Education and Ron Manuel, they have not done everything for our schools. They're not fighting for progressive revenue like we are. They're not going down to Springfield also to fight for progressive revenue. Right now, the Chicago Teachers Union, we're pushing for a TIF surplus ordinance that would actually take money out of the TIFs, which is tax increment funding, which is basically a mayoral slush fund, and bring that money to the schools. Right now, a lot of this money is going towards wealthy districts, towards downtown, um, towards, for example, remodeling bathrooms at the Board of Trade, going, going towards the United Airlines, and this money needs to be going towards our schools. And all you hear Claypool and the Board of Education talking about is making more and more cuts. And in the schools, we're bare bones. We can't take any more cuts. At my school, with 1,200 students, we only have a nurse about two days a week. And many schools only have one counselor. We're down in, we're 600 schools now, and we only have um, librarians in one-fourth of the schools. Majority of our schools don't even have librarians and our class sizes are skyrocketing. We want, we want to come to a deal. That's why we've been bargaining for so long. But ultimately, we have to do what's right for our students. And right now, we have to strike. The Board of Education has shown that they're, they're not ready to come to a deal without us withholding our labor. And we're sad that it's come to this, but we will strike to protect our students. And so, Micah, can you talk about the significance of this? You know, you covered the 2012 strike, and that was a historic strike because at a time when unions are in decline, they're under attack, um, it was the caucus of rank-and-file educators, which Sarah is a, a part of, that sort of took the fight um, to the um, elites that control Chicago and that, uh, you know, where Chicago was sort of a uh, testing ground for these neoliberal education reforms that we see across the country. Yeah, uh, Sarah's caucus, the caucus of rank and file educators, when they took over the union in 2010, they really had a different vision for doing unionism than previous leadership had in the union. And I would say most leaderships of unions around the country had, which is uh, that they believed that they uh, it, that, the, that their power would come from uh, democracy within the union, uh, from militancy and the willingness to do things like go on strike. Um, and they showed the power of that in 2012 when I think everyone universally recognized 
that the teachers uh, won the strike in 2012. Um, in 2012, labor was and continues to be in a really rough place. I mean, we have union, the percentage of unionized workers at all time lows since the Great Depression. Uh, we have strikes at incredibly low numbers around the country. Um, so, but the sh CTU uh, showed a, a couple things in 2012. I mean, one that you could go on strike in 2012 at a time when labor is really weak and still win. And not only win the strike, but win against a real power player in the Democratic Party, Rahm Emanuel. Um, and you could stop this uh, agenda, the, the, the corporate education reform agenda, the neoliberal education reform agenda, um, that had pretty much been uh, just roll, steamrolling uh, across the country, that had, had faced very little resistance uh, around the country. And so uh, they showed that in 2012. Um, and they did that through withholding their labor, um, but not just withholding the labor, but making their strike uh, a strike that is for, you know, not just for winning better health care or a pay raise or anything, but really about uh, advancing a broad vision of social justice for all people, uh, for students, especially in, in Chicago. Um, and at the time in 2012, uh, we saw polls repeatedly show that overwhelming numbers of Chicago, especially even CPS parents, uh, were backing the Chicago Teachers Union. And that's still true today. Uh, newspapers like the Chicago Tribune keep doing polling, asking uh, CPS parents, the very people who would be inconvenienced by uh, a, a CTU strike, do they support the Chicago Teachers Union or do they support Ron Emanuel? Uh, and the answer is still overwhelmingly that they support the CTU. Um, so this is a significant thing. The CTU has emerged over the last six years as the principal political force in Chicago that is opposing Rahm Emanuel and his neoliberal democratic uh, politics. And uh, this, is, this is a unique thing in, in any city around the country. And Sarah, um, I was also in Chicago for the uh, strike in 2012, and I noted, um, you know, how uh, the media covered uh, the strike, not only the strike, but just unions in general in Chicago, and the, and the corporate media especially, um, you know, was covering the, the actions with disdain, with contempt. Um, and, you know, M Micah just cited some polls, but you know, that the mass media does have an, an impact on, um, you know, parents and, and people in the community that rely on it for their information. Um, what is uh, CTU's plan to reach out to the community uh, before and during the potential strike and, and how to keep those lines of communication open? Um, well, first of all, independent news sources like you all are very important. Um, and social media, you know, Facebook and Twitter, a lot of our parents use it, a lot of our students use it, and we're, we're sending our messages that way. And we're doing a lot of just leafleting of parents. Um, last week at my school, we had a bunch of teachers going out before school and after school, talking to parents one-on-one, -on -one, flyering parents, and saying, hey, you know, there is money out there. There are progressive revenue sources you know, there are potentially even taxes on the wealthy, and it shouldn't keep hitting working people, that the wealthy should should pay more and that money should go into the schools. Um, we're also having a walk-in, which is kind of like a rally on October 6th. It's a nationwide walk-in. Forty districts in Illinois are also participating, and where we will be rallying in front of the school with parents, with community organizations. We'll have speakers, uh, maybe singing, chanting. And we'll be getting our message out there because a lot of times the corporate media, you know, they're friends with Ram, they're just showing the side of the board, and they're not showing our side, that we're, we're really here to fight to save the public schools. And they always make teachers out to be greedy, and that's not the case. You know, we want to be treated as professionals. And currently, teachers make, seven, on average, 17% less than people who have our same um, education certification backgrounds. So, you know, we want to be treated as professionals, and we really want to be here to fight for the schools that our students deserve. And finally, Michael, let's end with you. Um, 2012 was also an election year. Um, and what's interesting about the, the vote then and the vote now is that um, the members of CTU surpassed a, the, um, the official uh, threshold to be able to strike by a wide margin, which I believe is 75 percent of the union must vote for the strike. And that was actually established as part of this neoliberal education reform in 2011. 
Um, you, you've written about that. Um, this year, something like 95 percent of teachers voted um, to authorize a strike just this week. Uh, t so talk a little bit about, um, more about the role of CTU and CORE in sort of fighting this education reform um, nationwide and what this means for, uh, for unionism across the country. Sure. To your first point about this uh, threshold that the union has to meet, shortly after CORE took office uh, in 2011 uh, at the state level, there was a bill that was passed that raised the threshold from a simple majority of voting union members voting uh, to a 75 percent of all members uh, margin uh, that was required to uh, for the union to authorize a strike. Um, and the, uh, that's obviously an incredible number. If we had to elect a president in the United States, no one would ever get elected uh, on the margin like that. Um, but because of the way that the CTU has uh, implemented this, this democratic uh, style of unionism, uh, we, we saw that they're able to produce those numbers again and again because they actually are a democratic union that is actually uh, in touch with, with its uh, rank and file membership. And so, um, they have, uh, you know, overwhelming numbers within their rank and file who are willing to uh, go out and fight for uh, this uh, vision that they have uh, put forward about social justice for all students and for all of Chicago. Um, and it's, uh, you know, just like it was in 2012, it's a, a huge uh, testing case because everyone will be watching Chicago, everyone who wants to institute more corporate reforms, who wants to get rid of teacher tenure, who wants to expand charter schools, who wants to break teachers' unions, um, will be watching Chicago to see if Rahm Emanuel is able to, uh, to defeat the CTU this time. If, if he is, then uh, it'll have pretty terrible consequences, I think, for lots of teachers' unions and the labor movement as a whole around the country. Uh, but if the CTU is able to, to stick it out, I think we'll see uh, an emboldened uh, teachers' unions and, and, and hopefully labor uh, more generally uh, in the near future. And um, I know I said last question, but I have one last question for Sarah. Um, this is an election year. Um, you know, CTU and and uh, especially CORE and sort of this you, you uh, sort of rejuvenized union movement, it had close ties and alliances with people like Bernie Sanders. Um, you know, Hil we know Hillary Clinton is the nominee. Are you expecting any support from the Democratic Party nationally? Um, we know they need your votes. Um, you know, some, some say that they take the votes of teachers for granted. Um, are you expecting anything? And, and what is your message to, to Hillary Clinton, to Hil Hillary Clinton um, during this election season? I mean, unfortunately, a lot of the big Democratic machine type candidates like Hillary Clinton have not been very supportive of our public schools. They've tended to support charters. And as you've probably seen, Hillary Clinton also receives a lot of money from banks. I'm hoping our strike will push pressure on the Democratic Party. Um, just to say that, you know, they need to fight for working people and fight for unions and fight to save the schools. I mean, around the country, you've see, seen what happens. You know, in New Orleans, they have no public schools left. They're all charter schools. In places like Philly and Detroit, they're becoming majority charter schools as well. Um, and the Democratic Party, you know, needs to be pushed. I would like to see a third party happen at some point in time, um, just because right now both parties are not pushing in favor of the public schools, and we really need to fight back. But as you see now with Rahm Emanuel, because of us striking and all the protesting that's happened around the city, Rahm Emanuel is, he's kind of the trash of the Democratic Party. You know, they made fun of him at the Democratic National Convention. And so I think the Democratic Party is going to try to stay away, far away from Rahm as possible, because he's not really helping them. All right. Well, we're going to certainly keep following the story. Uh, thank you both for joining us. Um, appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for joining us at The Real News. And go to therealnews.com for all of our coverage of the Chicago teacher strike, whether it was the one on April 1st or uh, 2012. We were there for the entire strike, and we've done several stories on it. Thank you so much for joining us.